Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. Okay, this is going to be insane. I actually, I had just shot a video on Gary Frank, um, uh, one of the Marvel UK books, and unfortunately I, I shot it as an FLV file, uh, because if your OBS crashes, uh, you'll lose the file, but, um, it needed to be edited and it's a pain in the ass. I would have to convert the file. So I'm going to do it later. But, um, there was an ad for this book in, in the comic and I was like, all right, this art is insane. And they had another spread of this and I really could not get over how good this artist was. So I'm not hundred percent sure who the artist is. This is the first time I've ever seen this book. I've heard of the title Warheads, of course. It's another Marvel UK book, but settle in because whoever this penciler is, and we'll find out in about three seconds. I mean, I see the name on the thing. It's X sign or X S scene. It, it sounds familiar to me, but, um, I'm serious. This is some of the best shit that I've seen um, in a while. It's like Michael Golden, Kelly and Plunkett kind of thing going on. But um, yeah, I'm really, really curious to see this. But let's let's peep the cover. Um, not not the highest res scan, but I, I, honestly, probably after I shoot this video, I'm gonna actually buy these because um, this is this is too good not to own. Man, this shit is so badass. I, I really, like, I can't believe that I don't know this artist's work, so we'll see when we get into it. And then I'm very curious of what else that they've done. So let's shut this. Got an old school ad. I kind of, the ads are sort of fun to see, so this is for basketball cards. Wow, how funny. Fleer. All right. We don't need to see more basketball cards. All right, here we go. So no credit on this yet. God, this guy's art is insane. So I, one thing that I had said in the Gary Frank video is one thing that I'm noticing with these Marvel UK books is they hired top talent. This was no joke. The people that were getting hired from Marvel UK were taking these jobs very, very seriously, and they were bringing their A game. I and mean, there's just no two ways about it. This is high 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 level stuff some of these artists are, are younger in their career and i'm not saying this particular artist but a lot of them it's early work from them but there was something about getting a gig from marvel uk that that definitely seemed to bring great things out of these artists so man like look at this freaking panel right here ah oh, it's so good this is great too man it's a lot of work all right, let's continue, friends. No slouches, only pouches. That's my new saying. All right, what do we got? So it is Gary er 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 Eric's Eric Skeen. Okay, I've definitely heard of him. Man, Gary's good. Gary, I don't know if you're out there, but dude, the shit is badass. Oh my gosh. You know, and it's interesting, too, because because back in 1992, obviously there wasn't the Internet. It wasn't easy to get, you know, some books, you know, like like it was it was really the luck of the draw. If you if you had a good comic book store, or bookstore in your neighborhood, then you could pick up cool shit. You could mail away for stuff, but it wasn't like you weren't just going to go like, oh, who's Katsuhiro Otomo? Oh, I'll just Google him, and then you the, for the next you know forty hours you can look at every single Katsuhiro Otomo uh, drawing that he's ever did done. You know, the, the, you really had to work for it um, back at, at this point. And so when someone puts together a style like this, and it's nineteen ninety two, you go, "Holy shit! Like, what the, what in the world was this guy on? This, this is like, this is wacky, wild stuff." All right, let's continue, man. I am loving it. Woo! He had to have been a Michael Golden fan. <laughs> right? I definitely see Golden. I don't know. Like, like uh, when I first saw the work, my guess was that this was Killian Plunkett. And when I saw the ad in the other book, you'll you'll see it. I'll, pro I'll probably have to shoot the other video again uh, if I can't edit it. Um, but, um, uh yeah, that was my guess, is it was Killian Plunkett. Because these faces kind of have a Killian Plunkett vibe. Now, I don't know in 1992 what Kill Killian Plunkett was up to, if he was drawing comics at that point or whatnot. Um, 
but I, I know his work and I know what it looks like and, and this had vibes of it, but it definitely has um, uh, some other vibes too. Like this face is reminding me of something. This one right here. I can't think of who it is, but it, it's got vibes. But a lot of times that's just coincidental too. Let me get rid of this. This is an annoying I was tripping out on this. Now, I've seen Wolverine kind of like this before, but I don't recognize this mask. And I don't know if he just draws it weird or if that was a costume. It looks sort of familiar, but um, it like if it's not and it's just the way that he draws the mask, it is a little weird. Look at this. <laughs> this guy had a passion for the, um, the technology. Yeah, you can see how pixelated this is. Just look at the panel border. It's how it's like, <laughs> it goes up and down. I ain't hating. I would have never seen this book if it wasn't for a scan online. So it's like, and I'm going to buy all the books. So, they, you know. God, this is so good. <laughs> I, I feel like I've seen Gary's work, uh, Pap, like later and i can't remember what what it was that he worked on but i definitely have seen his stuff before i don't know if he came to dc and did stuff or if he stayed with marvel wow this is so cool <laughs> their costumes are pretty wild sorry i can hear the fan on my computer this is really, really good. Phil Bonds. Okay, so that's funny because Philip Bond um, is Shelley Bond's husband, if I'm not mistaken. And then that would make sense because if he's friends with Philip Bonds, Philip worked for Vertigo for a long time. And I could see Gary, if he was that good of pals, that he would write his name in it. All this stuff is connecting. It's very weird, right? Like, yesterday we had the quite frankly um, joke, which which I'm nearly sure was not a coincidence. Um, but Frank, I, I had said in the other video that um, Frank, Frank around this time was doing a book for DC, which was the Batman Scotland, whatever it was called. I have the comic. Um, but, uh, it's like, Oh, this is really wild. The colors are, are really insane. Like, it seems like this seems like uh, slightly advanced techniques for 1992. I don't know. <laughs> Scintillating colors. I don't know what the process was for coloring in 1992 uh, in terms of like if this is if this is early Photoshop or if this is the the way that they have been calling stuff, you know, 5 years earlier. I'm not really sure. I do remember though and it's funny cuz you'll see like I watch a lot of video game documentaries and things like that on YouTube when I work and um they would talk about like how slow the computers were, but even when I got to Wildstorm, honestly, and this was around 1995, um, a lot of times when colorists would do certain things, they would literally just have to walk away from the computer for like a while, you know, while it would like process it. And I can't imagine what it was like in 1992. It must have been so primitive. So although you go, oh, well, what's the big deal? You just throw it in the computer and digitally color it and whatever crappy version of Photoshop, not crappy, but you know what I mean? Like old version of Photoshop existed, but you know, he might like do an airbrush stroke over this guy's face, and then you gotta wait ten minutes for the brush to actually like you know make the move. Like if you ever had lag on your computer, um, old people know. Older people will know what I'm talking about. But you know, my daughter, if her computer doesn't work for a second, she's like ready to you know throw it out the window. <laughs> it's like you don't know what it was like. <laughs> 13 gigs of RAM was all we had. <laughs> or less. <laughs> it's uh, pretty insane how fast technology is. Well, I mean, not fast, but but uh, it is impressive what's happened in the last, like, 25 years. It is, it is. Uh, 
this right here reminds me of um, Steve Scross. Steve Scross did a couple of really, really great Wolverine issues, and this has got a little bit of a Steve Scross vibe. Not uh, just they they're similar. I'm not saying that one was influenced by the other, vice versa. To be clear, I'm just saying that it reminds me of of Steve Scross. I was I, it, there's a lot of stuff that reminds me of Steve Scross, and it's funny because for years I would always have trouble remembering his name because he didn't really do a ton of comic art, uh, but he's really really good. I think one thing people I think know him for is I believe he worked on the Matrix, and he might have something in the art of the Matrix book. But definitely worth looking up. It's Scross with a K. S-K-R-O-C-E. This is really nice. I like I like actually how loose the jacket is on him. It's it's uh it's nice. Like like the a lot of drapery going on here. Looks good. Yeah, this is great. The shit takes a long time. I'm I've made the mistake of being a guy that has a lot of black in his panels, and it's um it's nightmarish how long it takes to fill in blacks around stuff and in all these little nooks and crannies. I mean, you can go in with white and do it, but it's sometimes, I don't know. Be careful what you, what style you choose. <laughs> That's my word of warning. You'll remember it later. <laughs> in particular, if you pick a style that's time-consuming. Yeah, this is great. I, I was getting a little Jeff Darrow vibe earlier, and then this is having a little tiny bit of a Jeff Darrow vibe. Not not a lot, but at times, and it could just be because there's a lot of detail. This is really, really good, though. Yeah, it's funny. I won't, now, Steve Scross could have been influenced by this, but this is a very Steve Scross Wolverine. I don't know what year Scross did his... Um, oh, man, that's great. I don't know what year Scross did his Wolverine issues. I had bought them as back issues. Um, but I'm guessing it was around the, between 90 and 96. Boy, it's a lot of work. Really, really nice. Man, this, this pose right here, oops, I, I meant to have the brush, uh, this right here is really great. This is interesting. I remember um, the owner of Humanoids. I was talking to him one time, and um, he didn't understand this aesthetic where you have one picture and you split it up with panels. I don't think he cared for it. Fabrice um, Giger, I believe is his name. But yeah, we were talking about it, and, and I think... Um, oh, I had done it in a sample page at a bar scene, and I had... Um, I think I had split it into three. So, like, you know, not saying this, but you know what I mean? Like a panel like this shape with three things and he was like yeah I don't really I don't really like that in general it wasn't so much that he he didn't like mine but he may not have either but uh, I appreciate the honesty honestly so either way I could take it all right yes yeah, so this kind of has like a little Michael Golden thing like this it's more um realistic but what does that say barbecue of chaos no <laughs> i can't read it i think it says up here somewhere oh le circuit de chaos circus of chaos circus of fools Right. Oh, was that Tony Quinn? I... This guy would do a badass alien book. There's Sigourney Weaver right there. It was funny because I mentioned Alien in the other... Um, the other video too i looked at alien issue number one or like a new alien series came out it wasn't bad the the, the pencil was really good I, I thought the colors reminded me of actually one of my favorite colorists but it i didn't work on a alien book for me it was um Mar marte gracia it wasn't Mar marte didn't color it but it was that type of color so a lot of kind of rainbow colors and stuff like that 
felt like it, ultimately the book won me over though i have to say that like when i got to the end of it i was like that was actually really cool i'm definitely interested in the next issue and these girls are hot he did a really good job with this he really man he can really draw good gary eckerson this is so designed there's so much detail this guy is super scary looking. It it's funny because he reminds me a little bit of Arse Face, whatever. Wow, god damn. This is so time consuming. Oh my gosh. I didn't notice who inked this, if he inked himself. Uh, but um, I, God have mercy on whoever inked this. <laughs> wow, that was really cool. Okay, let's continue, friends. Yeah, this is really good. This was in the ad. I remember seeing that guy's face. This is a, such a nice drawing. This looks like it could be in like Heavy Metal Magazine. It's very, wow, god damn. I mean, it looks like he's using reference for this stuff, but fuck, it's good. Like it, it fits in fairly well. He can really draw. Boy. Oh, this is awesome. And the thing is, is you know, what what people don't understand is if when you when you get really good at using reference, I mean, at some point you really almost assimilate it and then you can just do it and it looks like you're using reference and you're not. I've seen a few people like that where it's just, you know, it's like memorizing anything that you draw. If you do it a few times, um, you, you can absorb it, but you have to be able to draw first. If you if you only copy, then it, it, it doesn't really get you there. That's the problem. It's the idea of just copying to learn is probably not the best idea. I know, Kitty. I know your toys are so fun. Wow, this is really good. What prompts did he use? <laughs> You don't like that joke, Kitty? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fire me up and make me burn. All right. Tat, 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 tat. Crack, coom. Crack, coom. All right. Let's go. What do we have here? I could see Carlos Dianda, my old office mate, loving this art. He's probably never seen this, to be honest. I'll have to send this to him. Carlos, check this out. You're going to love it. It reminds me a little bit of um, the guy that did the Grendel book. Uh, um, not not Grendel. Not, not, it was um, Goran pa Parlov. It's more detailed, but there was a couple of people. And... There's a couple of people that were working around that time that had stuff that was similar to this. Sometimes, you know, the funny thing is, is sometimes an artist in a book is like a perfect storm where, where he may have never had an opportunity to draw characters this sort of wacky again with all the designs and stuff like that. And, um... You know, something just magical happens when you take an artist that's got a certain skill level, a certain time in their life, a certain age where they've got a certain amount of energy, and you throw them into something like this, and you get this, like, perfect storm, uh, you know, and then if, if they go on and they do a, a different book, you know, you might go, man, I never really got that fix, that wild, wacky, crazy designed, like, the color, 
it's like a perfect storm of, of um, like a perfect combination of things. That's why, I mean, I really honestly do feel that like in some ways it is important for artists to write and draw their own stuff because you have a higher likelihood of um, tapping into that, you know? And the thing is, is if you find you're being interested in something new, you can blend it into the thing that you're working on. Um, and with discipline, meaning that it's just not random, uh, you're still challenging yourself. Yeah, these are great. You can really tell that, like, he can really draw well. I mean, it's all there. The fact that he can do gear this good pretty much is, says it all. Because once you, once you can do form like this, then drawing characters and stuff like that becomes definitely less of a thing. Oh, so this is Ken Griffey Jr. Probably who was on the other one. I don't know here. So this was the book. This was the book that I did. Um, that, that I would need to edit the video. I had to. St I I left my computer for like fifteen minutes and then had to come back and pick up where I left off. So um, anyway, it was really good and um, it it was like there was an ad like this for the book that we just looked at and uh, I was going like, wow, what in the world is this? Because this looks insane. But, you know, on the ad, like this, they didn't credit the artist. So when there was a double-page spread ad, beautiful, beautiful art, had a little bit of text of who was doing it, but what would have been nice is just, just a blurb saying, coming from Gary Frank, Paul Neary, you know, whoever whoever the team was. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't do that. But, um, you know, that's companies for you. <laughs> so, all right, you guys have a great day. I just want to make sure that we look at this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys have a great day. That was really fun to look at. There's, there's more issues of him on that book. I, I believe he did four. They're from 1992 and, uh, it was really, really cool. I definitely want to see more and I'm going to Google him right now and I may run to eBay and actually buy those books right now too. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. I will be back tomorrow, probably with this book and, and, uh, it was good. Really good. In fact. So, all right, talk to you later. Bye.